Well, I've just got to mention right away first <clears throat> that uh, the shirt you're wearing is the shirt that you wore on the Jules Holland show. That's why it felt so familiar. Yeah, well, I, yeah, found, I, I found it today and I pulled it out of the I couldn't the figure it out. I went, what's this? Uh, what is this shirt? <laughs> Well, I mean, I said you look you looked uh, dwarfed in the shirt. I mean, you can see. Well, I was. Uh, uh, I filled it out, man. Lord, yeah, your shirt I and your hair. Out. Your hair is not you know kinky curly like it was. No, uh -uh. it's smooth. I don't. I see my life was in such disarray that my hair was just. You could hear it curl. It could, <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, a lot of people seem to think that you permed your hair for that show or something. No, I, no, it's just you know at farm stand, work. Would you give you curly hair? Stand up for a minute and and show that shirt off because you you, I mean it's, it looks large. Oh, on oh you. yeah, I look like one of those commercials. <laughs> Sorry to. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> So when when you did Jules Holland, you actually had to unbutton your pants to to yeah, and to I was it was on up there. I was I was 185 pounds, and uh, and, and truth be known, I was probably pushing 190. Whoa! And uh, every my whole everything was a runaway then. You know, my life was. A, it's so weird. I mean, you don't even look like you to me, you know? You're, no, you know, uh, I, I wasn't me. <laughs> you know, I was there, okay? I was there, but I was not completely this guy, you know? I, I, everything was so shrouded and with all those pharmaceuticals. I mean, my insides were just... Doo, 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 doo. I, was in, I, I was in pain in my stomach after that thing for two weeks. At following that, I was convulsing and just trying to maintain. And uh, it was, my hands were trembling so that I, the only time they would stop is when I touched the keyboard. And uh, but I can't even make them tremble that fast. And prrr, it was like, holy man, trembling Michael. because shorten out, you know, because of the drugs. That yeah, you because of all of the pharmaceuticals. I was like six or seven different pharmaceuticals, probably eight. Uh, one for one thing, one for this, and one for that, and one for that. And I'm drinking on top of it. Even though I wasn't drinking during that show or before it, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, all that stuff was still, it was like misfiring, you know, all through my body. And all throughout my body. And I, I when I, that was the, uh, that was the defining moment in my, uh, sobriety. Uh, over the over 20 years now, uh, I looked across the room and I saw Eric sitting on, on his guitar amp with his leg crossed and guitar in his lap and had a ball cap on and sweatshirt. And there was this uh, 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 an aura of tranquility, a, a sense of peace about him that he, that just emanated uh, across the room. And I said, that's what I want. You know, that's what I want. And it was six months to the day, pretty much, of Jules Holland show that I, last time I took pharmaceuticals or had alcohol, you know, so that was that, that's a true story, you know. October the uh, 13th was uh, two, in 2000. That was adios for me, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say, you know. But it was a lot of it was influenced because I could see it. I remembered what he was like. You know, I remembered the tortured soul. I remembered that well. I remembered him as the tortured soul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Self-inflicted or not, you know, he still had to put himself through, through all that, get down there to... to a, to rise above it all, and evidently he just kept rising, you know, raising on up. That's good. I'm, but I wanted me some of that, <laughs> not his, but my own, right. and, and I, I have, I have it, you know, I have it. And I'm grateful every moment of it, every day. It took a yeah. long time, but it's worth it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. 
Well, someone else wanted to know uh, what your relationship with Mick was like, what he was like, actually. Uh, was he a nice Mick person? Jagger, he's a good guy. Yeah, he was, and he's all very respectful, you know, uh, of, of me. You know, they might be a little bit forgetful, but very respectful. <laughs> uh, I called him Michael T. Jaguar. <laughs> Everybody had, you know, I was strawberry alarm clock. Carl Radle hip tagged me with that. Everybody, you know, for some reason, everybody had different, you know, handles, you know. Right. Delaney called Eric Enoch Crap Talk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, I got, maybe he got all that going. I don't know, you know. But, but, but Mick is a good guy. Uh, I could have been in the band, but I, it's not. I, Eric and I were putting a band together. And uh, the Stones, I, I liked Stu, uh, their piano player. He was a lovely man. Mm. And uh, he, he didn't mind sitting behind the curtains, you know. The original Stone, what a lovely guy. He was like a Mal Evans kind of a person. He had that gentle demeanor about him, you know. And uh, I but, used to see uh, go see him play with Alexis in, uh, at Dingwalls. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He and Charlie Watts and... They had all kinds of players. With At Dean Wall? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a place to hang out in Camden. But, yeah, you and I, uh, we have uh, our Parallel roads. Parallel lives. Have just, you know, <laughs> kind of. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, all, all throughout our, our, our career and lives, you know. Pretty amazing. But uh, a long... you were You were ahead of me by 10, 11. Well, yeah, you know. I had you about a decade or so, you know, a decade plus. But that's all right, you know. Got you now. <laughs> that's what's important. I got you, babe. Yeah, baby. <laughs>